In this video, we're going to talk about our default ISO raising range, which you see here on the screen. And we're also going to talk on the next slide about spots where we can look to increase our ISO raising range as well. So I talked about weak tight versus weak loose limpers. What I've done here is I've developed a default ISO raising range that'll work against both of those. And I've also included in the tan collar are optional slash overlimping hands. And we'll talk about overlimping later in our preflop section. So this is our default range here that you see in the dark gray. This will work against weak tight and weak loose limpers. However, we can make adjustments based upon the different types of players. And we'll talk about that on the next slide. So the way that this is composed is that it's composed of premium to strong Broadway hands as well as pocket pairs down to pocket eights for our default range. And there's a reason why I recommend a very strong range because you'll probably see other poker coaches recommend a much wider isolation raising range, but I don't for a particular reason. The reason that I recommend such a strong range is because a majority of the limpers at the micro stakes are going to be weak loose limpers. And not only are they gonna be weak loose limpers, but they're going to be calling stations that love to call post flop as well. So knowing this, this tells us that we need hands that are going to win at showdown because we're not going to be able to semi bluff them out of the hand or bluff them out of the hand post flop. So hands that will win at showdown are the hands that are listed here in the dark gray. These are our strong ISO raising range of hands. Now, if we want to expand this out, we have our optional ISO raising ranges within here that we can look to widen up our ISO raising range against people that tend to overfold, such as our weak tight limpers. And we can also look to potentially overlimp these as well. So I want you to understand that these can work in both situations to ISO raise or overlimp. Overlimping isn't something I recommend that you do too much, but I definitely want you to understand the strategy behind it. And so that's why we're going to talk about that later in the course as well. So with that said, let's talk about how we can make some exploitative adjustments to our game. So against weak tight limpers who have a tendency to either fold too much to raises pre-flop or they play straight forward post-flop or tend to fold a lot post-flop, then these are the perfect type of candidates. And I'll make sure I highlight this. Weak type limpers are the perfect type of candidate to increase our ISO raising range with our optional range provided. So even though they're playing a stronger range, they play fairly straightforward and some of them are very exploitable where if they limp preflop and it's the weaker portion of their limping range, well, they're just simply gonna fold preflop. And then post-flop, they play straightforward as well. So we can simply push them out of the pot post-flop as well. So that's one of the reasons why, because of these two reasons right here. However, I'm not a huge advocate of ISO raising way too wide at the micro six, and we talked about this on the last slide. So while I recommend this potential optional ISO raising range to utilize it against these types of players when they are playing a weak type style of play, it's still somewhat on the conservative side compared to other coaches. You'll see other coaches even recommend a much wider, weaker range of hands. So understand that we have these optional hands. They are weaker hands, and we can look to expand it against these types of opponents, our weak tight limpers. But it's not something that we should be looking to do too much, at least at the beginning. So it's something that you can look to start to utilize, but don't just look at it and say, okay, well, Alton has this as an optional one, and this guy is weak tight. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ISO raise him. I, you also need to know how to play properly post flop as well to try to push them out of the pot if they do call pre flop. So consider all that. Consider implied odds, something that we started to talk about as well, but don't use it too much. So, anyways, that's our default range and our discussion on looking to potentially expand out our ISO raising range as well. In the next video, we're going to talk about our isolation rate sizing. So if you have any questions about the default range, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care.